My question is, uh, do antidepressants uh, interfere with the brain? Because we all, most of us are aware of the side effects of antidepressants. So my question is that does it permanently alter the structure of the brain? And uh, would it really interfere with the manifestation process? If you look at any placebo studies, double-blind, triple-blind placebo studies, about 83% of people that are in a, a, a double-blind or triple-blind placebo study that are given a placebo respond as well as the antidepressants. You can do functional scans on their brain before and after, and at the end of the six or eight week period of time, <clears throat> that person's brain has changed significantly. There's, you can see the change in their brain. And when you interview that person, many of the people would say, I think the researchers made a mistake. I actually think I took the real medication. But in fact, they took the placebo. So that it means then their brain is making their own pharmacy of chemicals equal to the chemical they think they're taking. Are you with me still? So in fact, the, the, the chemistry in the brain begins to change by thought alone. It's, it's the best pharmacist that we've ever had. Does that make sense? So then, depression then uh, is a clinical thing. There's different spectrums of depression. But, you know, the thing about it, uh, the, the antidepressants, number one is the, the kind you take. And, you know, they call them, the majority of them are called SSRIs. And the theory behind it is that there's a lack of serotonin. And those particular chemicals actually take an enzyme and they allow serotonin to stay in the joint space. And the majority of the SSRIs were created from one chemical, one drug. Who knows what it is? Benadryl. They noticed that people with anxiety and depression that took Benadryl all of a sudden got better symptoms. And so they started to look into, the, into that drug. So there's very little evidence that shows that some of those antidepressants does any damage to your brain. What it does is they have a lot of effects. And they're not side effects, by the way. They're direct effects. And don't let anybody tell you they're side effects. They're very direct effects. They're biological effects that begin to suppress certain systems. And um, sometimes people have more side effects from the medication that are more damaging than the depression itself. So, <clears throat> so many people in this work, I can show you brain scan after brain scan after brain scan. So many brain scans of people that had anxiety or depression. And you know, anxiety is just focusing on the worst possible scenario in your future and emotionally embracing it enough times that you condition your body to become the mind of anxiety. And over time, the conditioning process conditions the body to subconsciously become the mind of fear or anxiety. Do that enough times, the body out of, out of balance has a panic attack. Try as you may to control it with your conscious mind. You actually can't, you've programmed it subconsciously. Depression is reviewing some past experience enough times that you're producing the same chemistry in your brain and body over and over again. Your body doesn't know the difference between the actual experience that's creating that emotion and the emotion that you're creating by thought alone. And you condition your body into hopelessness and powerlessness. And if you look at some functional scans, a lot of times you'll see that anxiety and depression look very alike. It's a very similar uh, effect. But when you're in the present moment, when you labor for that sweet spot of the present moment and you start creating more brain coherence, my goodness, the act of doing that, you can't be worrying about the future if you've overcome those thoughts and emotions. You can't be reliving or romancing the past as you move into the present moment. Now, some of the effects that we've seen with people, we've measured serotonin levels, we've measured melatonin levels, we've measured oxytocin levels, GABA, glutamate, we've measured all of those neurotransmitters. And our, our students in four days have a robust change, a really significant change in their neurotransmitters. And serotonin levels come up, melatonin levels come up, and they feel literally a lot better. Now, when you open your focus and you start creating more brain coherence, and your autonomic nervous system is beginning to process a greater frequency, and we've seen this enough times, all of a sudden now, what once looked like an imbalance in the brain, all of a sudden very naturally moves back into coherence, and the person is less fragmented or disjointed or fractured in some way, uh, neurologically and emotionally. So every time you begin to create more brain coherence, and more heart coherence, so when the heart becomes active, activated, it acts as an amplifier to begin to influence the brain. Is a, 
I have no, and have no doubt in your mind that most people will find a place where they have a natural change in their well-being and less dependent on any exogenous substance, any external substance to make them feel better. And we have hundreds and hundreds of case histories of people who have done it. So over time, it's not something that you should just quit your antidepressant, but you should see and experiment. If you cut the volume in half for two weeks, how you feel, and you begin to wean yourself off it, and you notice that you do better. So a lot of people have come off it, but I don't recommend just coming off it without some, some supervision.